focusing on the sacred, the worship or veneration, as it were, of the gods. Where does that fall in line with us as heathens now in modern times? And where did it fall in line with heathens as they existed and as they may have lived or worshipped or venerated the gods in ancient times? All right, everybody. Hail and welcome back to another episode of Midgard Musings. My name is Jesse, and I am the host here on this channel. If things pertaining to Norse heathenry, Germanic paganism, or what is quite often just kind of lumped into a overall generic term of also true, saw true, whatever you know emphasis you want to put on it, then I invite you to please subscribe to my channel right down here below. Ding the bell notifications and make sure that you select all from the drop down that comes forth from that. So that way you are notified every time that I do upload content. So as you can see, um, today's video is a little bit different. A lot different, actually, if you consider the, the format and the layout of videos that I have done in the past. Um, not saying that this is going to be the format or the layout all of my videos going forward but here we are right now today to talk about gods over the folk gods focusing on the gods over focusing on our folk focusing on our tribes our people our families our clans those who are nearest and dearest to us and maybe any other figures or maybe any other um you know <clears throat> whether it be uh whites or, or, or any other focuses uh, in our religion and our spirituality, why we tend to have such a higher focus, or why we see such a higher focus on venerating the gods. And does that even fall in line with the way we as pagans, we as heathens in modern times should be approaching the sacred? Now, the reason that I bring this up in a video is a sort of silent response to a lot of things that I see on various social media platforms, mostly on Facebook, since that tends to be the social media platform that I view most of my heathen or pagan related posts about. I don't really see a whole lot or stay on Twitter that much. Um, so I don't see a lot of uh, social media platforms besides Facebook. I don't mess with Instagram or any of that other stuff either. Um, so the reason why I'm posting this video is a sort of, like I said, silent response to a lot of posts that I see on social media where folks, especially newcomers to this religion or to this faith or to this path, ask the ways that they can connect to the gods. Um, some of the questions that come up are quite often geared towards, you know, I feel that I was called Path. I feel that a certain god or goddess or gods or goddesses um, are calling me to this path. And I feel that I am, you know, to, to, to venerate or worship them as my sort of patron or patroness um, deity. Um, and so this video is meant to be a sort of response to those sorts of posts. Because I see a lot of them uh, more now than I have in the past. And I don't know if that's the algorithm to blame or if there are, are just an insurgence or, or a rise in more folks coming to heathenry, coming to paganism and, and trying to find their way in this path. And so before I go into my response or to this, you know, the context of this video, context, contents of this video, I wanna start off by saying that everything that I say on this channel um, is, is largely and entirely, I should say, not even largely, but entirely my opinion, my view of the world as it stands right now in my even walks of life, okay? At this point in life, um, my approach to heathenry is going to reflect what I put out here on this channel. In the past and in my past videos, things may seem a little bit different. If you look back throughout my catalog over the last nearly three years, and I'm sure in three years from now, there's going to be content that may adjust or seem different is today this is just my view 
as a pagan in modern times, as a Norse pagan in modern times, and as I learn things and as I find things that fit my approach, I share them on this channel. So by no means am I a leading authority in the way you should heathen. I am by no means a, you know, end all be all to heathenry. This is my opinions. These are my views. They are trying to be, at least, I, I try to focus my approach on a largely historical approach to things. I am not what I would consider myself a hardcore reconstructionist or a historical reconstructionist even. Um, but I do tend to lean on the historical parts of things. And as I learn and as I grow, my path tends to focus and lean heavily more on those things. Um, but I also understand and, and approach the fact that we are living in modern times and that I'm a modern heathen, right? As you see in my intro, it's, you know, living the old ways in modern times or practicing the old ways in modern times. So there are certain things about the way it was done or way it may have been done in ancient times that just really don't fit, practically speaking, um, in modern times. And so with that being said, please take that into consideration. The fact that what I'm sharing with you is my approach to heathen and the way I see the world right now. All right, so now that we've got that sort of thing out of the way, gods over folk, you know, that may seem a pretty loose term or, or you know, opens a lot of questions when you see that, what do you mean by gods over folk, you know, um, where do we fit the folk, where do the people, where do the, where does, where does, where does the tribe, where does, where does us, where do us as people living in profane space and time fall into line with the gods who exist and live in sacred space and time. Now, the reason, like I said, that I wanted to bring this up and talk about this is a sort of silent response. Nobody asked me about this. Nobody said, hey, can you do a video about this? Um, but it was a sort of silent response to a lot of things that I see now in that people tend to come to this path or find this path by whatever means and need to or, uh, or, or feel the need to automatically and initially honor the gods, worship the gods, venerate the gods, sacrifice to the gods, offer to the gods, find a sort of quote unquote patron or patroness, god or goddess, maybe more than one, and um, are, are asking questions about what do I do? You know, I feel a call to this particular god or goddess, and here's the reason why. So now, what do I do and how do I respond to this? And so much of what I've come to learn as a heathen over maybe just the last five, six years, eh, about six or seven years, I, I guess would be the more accurate uh, time frame of things, as long as I've been walking this path of mine, is, uh, you know, the concern that is put so much on the gods and the sacred um, by us. When I say us, I mean us as people, us as folk. I don't mean folk as a race sort of thing. I don't mean folk as a niche sort of, you know, um, gentrified, maybe that's not the right word, but you know, a, an exclusive um, race or whatever. I don't mean folk in that sort of way. I mean folk as us as people, us as the individuals existing in profane space and time. And over time, like I said, as I've, you know, traversed this pagan path of mine, and as I've come to learn certain things, what I've come to learn is that our interaction with the sacred, our interactions with the gods and goddesses of our lore, of our mythology, is limited to our ex to, to, to an extent of our um, <clears throat> collective efforts. Now, when I say collective efforts, what I mean by that is that <clears throat> our interactions with the gods and goddesses on a day-to-day -day basis, um, whatever you feel, whatever I feel, um, whatever he feels, whatever she feels, whatever they feel, so on and so forth, is 100% unverified personal narcissism. It's UPG. And I've done videos about the value of UPG, where I see um, UPG falling in modern times. You know, 
there's no way to to find a historical source that says yes this person experienced the gods or goddesses in this individual or specific way and that is therefore how we as individuals uh can you know uh perform certain things and can expect to experience the gods and goddesses in those sorts of way by doing a b and c at least not so far as i've been able to do know about though is how the folk and how the people and how on a tribal level, on a more, you know, community sort of level of folks were able to um, <clears throat> interact with gods, goddesses through bloat and through certain sacred religious rituals that involved the people, that involved the folk, that involved the tribe, society, community, whatever label you want to put to it, um, or whatever it was called at the time, the interactions with the sacred were done in a way that involved the people. Um, and so we, we, we see this in a number of the sagas. We see this in a number, um, mainly in the sagas, but, you know, so it, and, and we see it happening at certain and specific times, right? You know, during Yule um, or during any of the other um, major holy tides, holidays, whatever you want to call them, um, throughout historical heathen texts okay so the focus on an individual being quote unquote called to the gods or called to heathen as it were um, has to me a lot of Christian undertone that you know um, you, you, you somehow owe something to the gods for um, being here or that you somehow owe something to give to the gods uh, in, in your worship or in your veneration or, in, or that you are somehow indebted to them in servitude or service. Now, again, I'm not saying that this is the exact perception that every single person that comes into heathenry um, nowadays may find themselves feeling. What I'm saying is that what it feels like to me, and that's what it's perceived um, as by me. And so therefore, what I want to hopefully help some folks understand and potentially guard against is the fact that we really don't know how individuals may or may not have felt an inclination or a draw or a pull to the gods specifically the gods i argue the fact that that even was a thing um in pre-christian scandinavia and pre-christian heathen times um because again, the, the whole notion of the fact of being called to the sacred, being called to the gods seems very Christian to me. And this is coming from me as somebody who was pretty much born and raised in a Christian household. I, I was you know, very deeply involved and devoted to my Christian teachings and learnings. I have read through the King James Bible total of seven or eight times i think i've lost track of, of times uh, not just you know books or portions but cover to cover um and understood the approach and the worldview of, of christianity again i'm not trying to sit here and, and, and talk about that per se but again the whole you know being called back home being called to the gods being called to god that sort of thing it's just you're changing the pantheon you're changing the uh the, the, the supreme sacred figure uh, from from one to to multiple gods. At least that's my perception of it. And so I would, you know, uh, I would caution folks from that. What I do feel uh, is happening with with folks that that may be feeling a pull to, towards heathenry is I feel that <clears throat> there are things within. There's a gravity well that exists within us that that pulls us back to um where our roots lie okay or where our roots dwell um, and that gravity well kind of pulls us back as it were to a home like feeling um and every everyone okay, um, maybe with the exception of a few folks out there um but but many people want to feel that there is something bigger and better than themselves in the universe, in the cosmos, in whatever label or whatever name you want to put to it. And so for, for, for many of us that are, you know, 
discovering these things, maybe there was a trigger, maybe there was something, there was an image, there was a quote from a Havamal stanza, maybe there was a, you know, a, a meme that got shared, maybe there was a, a video that got shared, maybe, I don't know, so many things could have triggered something that, that sparked the interest to want to learn more about this particular thing. And that particular thing was, you know, uh, a, a, a Germanic pagan approach to, to religion. And so in that interest and when that spark got lit, when that thing got triggered, um, again, so many folks, myself included over the years, have, have come to healing from a Christian um, background of things, right? You were born or raised in a Christian environment, a Christian household, learning Christian values, going to church, so on and so forth. And so as such, there's some baggage that gets brought along with us. And we think now we have to look to the gods instead of God, right? We need to look to Odin or Thor or Freyg or, or Baldur or Tyr or, or Seti or any of the others, you know, um, in, in our Norse pantheon. Maybe we need to, you know, we need to now automatically, because we are attracted to this ancestral path, that now all of a sudden we have to start deciding which god or goddess or gods or goddesses we uh, are going to ultimately venerate and choose to worship on a regular personal basis. And to that, again, I would simply say, watch out and be cautious of that because there, again, there's, there's really nothing that we can revert back to or look at to say that this is the way it was done, um, historically speaking, or this is the way it should be done um, or anything like that. Now, again, what is your, you know, personal experiences? What is you know, your UPG is, is, is essentially that, okay? If it works for you and it feels right to you, then that's what matters. Um, there are plenty of things that I have done and continue to do in my pagan practices that, that work for me and feel right to me. Can I find it in a book anywhere? Can I find it in a historical source? Can I, you know, look back and say that, yes, this is the saga that it was referenced and this is why I do it the way I do it? No. And I don't expect everybody and anybody else to do it that way. I feel that there is uh, enough uh, leniency in this path that, you know, certain things are structured, certain things work a certain way because of how it was documented. But when it comes to our personal interactions with the gods and goddesses, that's really kind of up to us. Now, what I do feel is that in lieu of that, okay, in lieu of trying to focus entirely on, you know, this god or goddess is speaking to me, you know, what should I do for her or him or them or that or whatever, you know what I mean? Um, in lieu of that, what I feel the focus should be and uh, where the focus should be is on developing our hearth cults, developing our individual cultic practices, developing and, and, and maintaining traditions because tradition is what brought us here. Tradition is what sparked the fire that we are now trying to keep i said it before multiple times, whether it be on podcasts or in videos across you know, my own videos or being guests on other channels or what have you, that you know, tradition is not worship of ashes. It is the preservation of fire. And that fire has, is, you know, an existing fire that goes back to our ancestors over many, many, many generations you know um, and things that get added to the fire over those years and over those generations are what keep the fire lit it's not the same thing over and over again there is a root there is a base there are some you know, fundamental things that that um, can be fallen back upon um, but the traditions are kept alive fire is kept lit through those new things that get added to it those new living uh, breathing things. So when I say that the focus should probably be more on developing your own hearth cults, developing your own individual cult practices, what am I talking about? What, am I, what do I mean by that? You know, that's a pretty broad statement if you think about it, um, especially for those that are coming new into healing. Well, what do you mean by individual cultic practice? What do you mean by traditions, right? And to that, I would simply reply that there are many traditions that you live day in and day out 
month in, month out, year in, year out, that you may not necessarily even think about that are traditions, you know? The way you do things is the way that your father or mother did things, is the way that their father and mother did things, and so on and so forth, and they are unique to your roof tree. They are unique to your yard, as it were, right? I've talked a lot about on this channel the concepts of the yard, inner and outer yards, um, and what those things particularly mean. Um, and in heathenry, that, that's a pretty important uh, topic of discussion. It may not be particularly ancient or old in its construct, um, but the concept of inner yards, outer yards, um, and the protection of those barriers and defining those barriers is, is definitely a thing. You know, so what do I mean by, you know, developing and maintaining traditions and hearth cults and that sort of thing? You're probably already doing it. You just don't even realize it or you haven't put a name to it. When you get up every morning, you, you know, make your coffee. And the first thing that you do before you drink your coffee is set it somewhere for the husvetir or the local whites of the home or the hof god or, the, or whatever you want to call it, the, the localized hearth guardian, the, the guardian or the god or the, or the, the fey, if you were, whatever name you want to put to it, right, or, or put to them. Um, you leave some to them. You lay a bowl of oats out or some milk. You do this thing, that, or the other. Whatever your hearth cult is, you've probably already started thinking about it or you already developed it or you've already had something that you do that um, is a hearth cult. That is where heathenry starts. Heathenry starts at the hearth. And I'm not going to take credit for that because that is something that um, a good friend of mine, Eric Shervin at the Ravens Call, has, has talked about before heathenry starts at the hearth. Um, another thing that I think is important to realize is that it, you know, there are more than just the gods that we have interactions with, especially on a day-to-day -day basis. I am a firm believer that um, our arch heathen ancestors and folks that, that existed in pre-Christian times had a closer involvement or a closer connection with the localized whites or spirits or vatir of the land and the home than they did with the gods that exist in sacred space and time. Why is that? Why is that? Because the Vatir exist in profane space. Yes, they are spiritual beings. Yes, they do not have the same restrictions as we do as mortal beings because they are spiritual beings, but they exist in profane space. And we coexist with them in the same plane, in the same space and time sacred space and time is, is is something different that is um a bit more restricted to just the average person not everyone or anyone is going to experience sacred space and time that is um, that that requires a lot of training and a lot of guidance and a lot of help from those spiritual guides those uh, the godis the the, the vitkis the um, those that are the, the say they're workers and those sorts of folks who can uh, practice those sorts of magical workings, right? So the reason why I feel that our ancestors had a closer connection to the Vatir of the land and of the home is because that is where they worked and lived and existed. And, and then they had to maintain and, and uphold a working and loving and caring relationship, especially with the, the localized whites of the home. And even the land, you know, because the land was what they lived on. You know, if the land was unhappy, if the land was, was ill, then their hearth was ill. So therefore there was this harmonious relationship that had to be maintained um, between these entities, between these forces that existed. And we see experiences of this, we see examples of this, I mean, um, throughout some of the sagas. So now what does that mean for us in modern times? So many folks that come Ask the questions. I, I read a book. I saw a thing. I listened to a song. I watched a video. I saw a meme or whatever. And now all of a sudden, you know, Balder is calling to me. Or Freya is calling to me. Or Frigg and Odin and Thor or whatever are calling to me. Perhaps, again, I'm not going to sit here and be the one to argue your own UPG and argue the fact of who or, or which of the gods or goddesses are. Um, sparking an interest within you that's not for me or anyone i think to decide um what i do want to encourage those that are feeling this perhaps is that maybe it's not what you think 
Maybe it's not the gods. Maybe it's it's an ancestral pull. Maybe it's part of the. Maybe you're entering the gravity well and you're being pulled towards something that is closer to home, closer to where you exist now. Your ancestors, the Vatir around you, that that you know seek to to maintain a harmonious relationship. And then what are you doing to develop those things before you start worrying about things that are so far out of the realm of profane space and time? Um, I've often said this. Why have your head so far up in Asgard that you're of no use here in Midgard? Um, the gods exist, and to whatever degree you feel that they exist, whether you're a hard polytheist, a soft polytheist, whether you think the gods are metaphors, whether you think the gods are actual, real, existent beings, um, that sort of thing, that's up to you. But what we do know exists are the things and the people and you know, the, the living folk, uh, the Vatir that we maybe can't physically see, but that we know are around us because we feel them, we, we see their actions, we see the behaviors and things around us that confirm their existence. You know, to whatever end, are those the things that are needing to be nurtured before you start worrying about your relationship with the gods because the gods worry about themselves the gods worry about things pertaining to them and it is very rare if ever that an individual acting on any sort of impulse is going to garner the attention of the gods yes we read about certain specific examples of the greatness of an individual who has, who has drawn the attention of the gods um, but overall and largely based off of historical things we know that things were done to for, to and for the gods at a communal, societal, tribal level. Um, and again, how it was done individually, we may not ever know because it's, that just wasn't ever documented. So I would love to encourage everyone coming into this, do not neglect the things that are right in front of us and around us and nearest to us. Don't neglect our people. Don't neglect the... Um, cultivation and maintain maintenance of breath. Frith is an important thing that needs to be understood and for what it really is. Frith is not the same as just peace and getting along with each other. There is much more to Frith. It's much deeper. There is much more about Frith than just being friends online and that sort of thing. There is more to it than that. Understand and know the spirits of the land and of the home that exist and work in their own ways around us and how we are cultivating and how we are maintaining uh, good relationships with those figures, the figures and the spirits and, and entities that exist in and around us in profane space and time. Develop your hearth cult, develop your hearth traditions, build a strong hearth. And then from there, one can go out and either seek a tribe, build a tribe if, if, if there's not one nearby to, to you know tie yourself to or give yourself to or become a part of your you know, your own hearth with, um, and go from there. The gods do exist. The gods have been there for, for you know eons, timeless, timeless times. <laughs> so they're they're not going anywhere, right? What is going somewhere is you and I, and the people and the things around us. And how are we cultivating and maintaining those healthy relationships um, here and now? So anyway, that is today's video. And I'm curious to hear about what you think. My last video here on the channel was a different one. And I learned a lot from it. And this is part of what I learned is that I um, need to focus on the things that I started focusing on, um, where I started this channel at, and where I've kind of built this channel up from, and people that have, you know, come to be a part of this community in this sort of way, and listen and watch to what I do, and not really venture off too much into things that I really just have no business venturing off into. So, um, thank you guys for putting up with me on the last video. I know it wasn't my normal thing. Um, but uh, 
this sort of stuff is and this feels more like it's it's in my wheelhouse so as i learn and as i grow i want to thank you all for sticking around and coming along with me as i learn and as i grow. looking forward to learning and growing each and every one of you whatever you have to share please do so down in the comment section get to check out the description area for all the ways that you can support Midgard Musings. The link tree link points you in all the directions and ways that you can do so. Um, so until we talk again, hail, thank you all. See you in the next video.